Now, if you have done the work correctly, you should be able now to integrate the left-hand side directly. So I'm going to write it this way. I always recommend that you put in as an extra step, uh, well, I won't put in, as a, put in as an extra step the reason for using that integrating factor. In other words, that the left-hand side is supposed to be now 1 over x times y prime. I always put in that because there's always a chance you made a mistake or forgot something. Look at it, mentally differentiate it using the product rule just to check that in fact it is, turns out to be the same as the left-hand side. So what do we get? 1 over x times y prime plus y times the derivative of 1 over x, which indeed is negative 1 over x squared. And now finally, uh, that's 3a. Continue, do the integration. So you're going to get, let's see if we can do it all on one board. 1 over x times y is equal to x plus a constant, x, sorry, x squared over 2 plus a constant. And the final step will be, therefore, I now want, want to isolate y by itself. So y will be equal to, multiply through by x, x cubed over 2 plus c times x. And that's the solution. OK, let's do one a little slightly more complicated. Let's try this one. Uh, now my equation is going to be 1. I'll still keep to y and x as the variables. I'll, I'll use t in a minute or two. 1 plus cosine x. So I'm not going to give you this one in standard form either. either. Trick question. Uh, y prime uh, minus sine x times y is equal to uh, anything reasonable, I guess. I think uh, x, I, uh, 2x. Make it more exciting. OK. Now, I think I should warn you what, where the mistakes are, uh, just so that you can make all of them. So this is mistake number one. You don't put it in standard form. Mistake number two. Uh, uh, generally, people can do step one fine. Uh, mistake number two is you don't, this is my most common mistake, so I'm very sensitive to it. But that doesn't mean if you make it, you'll get any sympathy from me. I don't give sympathy to myself. Uh, you're so intent and so happy at having found the integrating factor, you forget to multiply q by the integrating factor also. You just handle the second, the left-hand side of the equation, and you forget about the right-hand side. So the both, the emphasis on the both here is the right hand, please include the Q. Please include the right hand side. Any other mistakes? Uh, well, nothing that I can think of. Well, maybe only, anyway, we're not going to make any mistakes for the rest of this lecture. So what do we do? We write this in standard form. So it's going to look like Y prime minus sine X sine x divided by 1 plus cosine x times y equals my heart sinks because I, I, I'm, I know I'm supposed to multi integrate something like this. And boy, that, I, that's going to give me problems. OK, well, not yet. Uh, what's the integrating factor? The integrating factor is, well, we want to calculate the integral of negative sine x over 1 plus cosine. That's the integral of p dx. And after that, we have to exponentiate it. Well, can you do this? Yeah, but if you stare at a little while, you can see that the top is the, bottom, is the derivative of the bottom. That is great. That means it integrates to be the log of 1 plus cosine x. Is that right? 1 over 1 plus cosine x times the derivative of this, which is negative cosine x. Therefore, the integrating factor is e to that 
In other words, it is 1 plus cosine x. Therefore, so this was step 0. Uh, step 1, we found the integrating factor. And now step 2, we multiply through by the integrating factor. And what do we get? We multiply through the standard form equation by the integrating factor. And if you do that, what you get is, well, y prime gets the coefficient 1 plus cosine x. y prime minus sine x equals 2x. Oh, dear. Well, I hope somebody would giggle at this point. <laughs> What's giggleable about it? Well, that all this was totally wasted work. It's called spinning your wheels. No, it's not spinning your wheels. It's doing what you're supposed to do uh, and finding out that you wasted the entire time doing what you were supposed to do. Well, we get, in other words, the net effect of this is to end up with the same equation we started with. But what is the point? The point is of, of having done all this was because now the left-hand side is exactly the derivative of something. And the left-hand side is, should be the derivative of what? Well, it should be the derivative of 1 plus cosine x times y, all prime. Now, you can check that that's in fact the case. It's 1 plus cosine x, y prime, plus minus sine x, the derivative of this side, times y. So if you had thought in looking at the equation to say to yourself, hmm, this is the derivative of that, maybe I'll just check right away to see if it's the derivative of 1 plus cosine x times y. Well, you would have saved that work. Uh, well, you don't have to be brilliant or clever or anything like that. You do it. You can follow your nose, and it's just... Uh, I want to give you a positive experience in solving linear equations, not, not too negative. Anyway, so we got to this point. So this is 2x, and now we're ready to solve the equation, which is uh, the solution now will be 1 plus cosine x times y is equal to x squared plus a constant. And uh, so y is equal to x squared divided by uh, x squared plus a constant divided by 1 plus cosine x. Suppose I had given you initial, an initial condition, which I did.